Welcome back everybody, I'm Chris and I'm from ScanTime and today we're going to be having a look at Mitsubishi's GX Developer. Last week we had a look at GX Developer but we had a look at subroutines with inside of GX Developer. Today we're going to take a step back and look at the basics of GX Developer, how to create a new project, how to create things like contacts and coils using X's, Y's and also their M bits and using instructions such as timers and counters just to get us started in working with this programmer. Now before we get into this video what I'd like you to do is leave the video a like, comment below on what you'd like to see next time and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with more new videos. Let's get started. So even though that GX Developer is an older PLC programming software package, it's still used on the shop floor today. And one of the big benefits with GX Developer is its simplicity. It's very easy to just create a new project and get started straight away without too much setting up. In fact, it was the very first PLC programmer that I learned when I was 15 years old, 13 years ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up GX Developer first of all, and we're using version 8 over here. And this is the interface for GX Developer. You've got your standard toolbar at the top your standard quick tools just below that to the left hand side you've got your project menu and to the right hand side you've got your project display and this is where your ladder logic will be inside of your PLC program what we're going to do is we're going to just select new project over here and the PLC that we're working with at the moment or that we're connected to is an FX CPU and it's an FX 2NC PLC. So we're just going to make sure we've got the FX CPU selected from this drop down menu and we're just going to make sure we've got the FX 2NC selected from this drop down menu here and the programming type we're going to leave it as ladder. We're not going to choose SFC today, sequential function charts, sequential flow charts. We're just going to leave it as ladder. Now, if we wanted to, we can set up a project name from here, leaving the project path as just default. I can give this a project name. Let's just say Chris Test, and I can give the project a name as well. We'll just call this Test. And then what I'll just say is OK. It's popped up here saying the project already exists. Do I want to delete the current project? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. It was just probably a previous project that I created. So I'm just going to say yes to that. And here we go. There is GX Developer in front of us. We've got a very basic ladder logic interface on the right hand side and our program interface on the left hand side. I've also got GX Works 2 down here, which is probably one of the most common platforms for Mitsubishi PLCs. One of the biggest things with GX Works 2 is the fact that you can choose when you create a project, if you want a simple project, or a structured project. I've showed you structured projects in the past that allows us to create things like functions and function blocks, but if I just go to new over here and I just select FX CPU, FX 2NC, and I change this to a simple project and I just say okay to that, what we'll now see inside of our ladder work area is what we see inside of GX Developer. It's effectively GX Developer inside of a new shell. You've got your GX Developer work background here, you've got your project you got your project menu over here, and again, you got your quick tools at the top there, just like GX Developer. It's just inside of a refresh background. So if you're used to using GX Developer, or you've got programs created inside of GX Developer, we can then convert them to GX Works 2 using the simple project, and we can then use it inside of GX Works 2. But we're not working on GX Works 2 now, so I'm just going to close this down, not save that, and I'm going to go back to our GX Developer. Now with GX Developer, it's not as user intuitive as things like TIA Portal, Alan Bradley, RS Logics 5000, etc., where we can just drag and drop contacts and coils, drag and drop our instructions over. It's a lot of click in place. So at the moment, you can see here we've got this end statement, and these end statements is what we used to use to define the end of a PLC program. Now you don't see this as much. So this right here basically tells the PLC this is the end of the PLC program, stop execution at that point there. So for us to insert some networks or rungs in our program we use the short key shift insert and I'm just going to do this I'm going to enter in a few rungs there and this will now show you like a dark gray background this dark gray background tells us that it's uncompiled so whatever work we do in here we have to compile it before we send it to the PLC so what we're going to do is we're going to create a standard start stop latch now you can use your quick tools up here you normally open contact you normally close contact in your coil but we can also use the short keys F5, F6 and F7. And to be honest, the short keys inside of Mitsubishi GX Developer are fairly intuitive and we tend to use these short keys quite a bit. So I'm just going to use F5 and I'm going to type in here M0. I'm not going to type in X0, which is my very first input, just because I want to be able to set these bits inside the PLC program, turn them on, turn them off and not use any sort of forcing. 
There's my M0 as my normally open. That there will be my start condition. I'm then going to put in F6, which is going to be my stop condition. And that's going to be M1 over here. And that there is entered in. Wherever we select in this uncompiled wrong area will be where these instructions are inserted. So make sure you're clicking in the right area. So I'm going to now put in an output coil, which is F7. And I'm going to tie that to my first output, which is going to be Y0. And that's Y0 on the actual PLC. Mitsubishi use X's for inputs, Y's for outputs. And you can see it's auto formatted it to the right hand side. Underneath M0, I'm then going to put in a normally open contact once again and address that to Y0. And then I'm going to use my vertical line here, which is Shift F9. And I'm going to add that just here where M1 is. If I added it here, what it would do is it would create the vertical line to the left and down. So it would create it just down at this sort of part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put M1 here, create my vertical line here, and then say OK to that. And that's now created it to the left of M1 and then down one from there. So that's now allowed me to create my latch. If I want to compile my work, all I do is I simply select F4 or I go to Convert, Compile. And that allows us to compile our project and it's all checked off there with the clear background. Now I still want to insert a few lines of code, so I'm just going to go to Shift Insert. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this output coil drive a timer inside of Mitsubishi. So to do that, we're just going to put on a normally open contact, Y0, enter that into there. And we're going to use a timer. And to use a timer inside of Mitsubishi, it's not the instruction window, which is F8. It's the coil once again, it's F7. So if I press F7, it asks us to enter in our timer or whatever we want to add in from here. So for us to enter in a timer here, all we would do is we would type in T for timer and then zero for our very first timer. We then put in a space and then we type in K for its constant and then we type in the timer value that we want. Now timer values inside of Mitsubishi GX developer are in tenths of a second. So if we want one second, we would use 10. If we want a 10 seconds, we would use 100. Just multiply the value by 10. So I'm going to type in here 100, which will be 10 seconds. I'm going to say OK to that. And now you'll see my timer entering across the right hand side, looking like a coil. However, it's got T0 inside of it and then K100 above it. That there's the actual timer itself. Now you'll notice, unlike other PLC programmers like TIA Portal and RS Logix 5000, that there's no sort of instruction menu that we can just drag and drop our instructions from. A lot of it is done through F7 and F8, and it's a lot of memory that we're having to think about what these instructions are called and the syntaxes for those instructions. This is why you need to know how these instructions are all listed inside of the PLC, especially the most common ones. So now what I want is that when our timer turns on, I then want to turn on another output coil. So I'm going to just put a normally open contact over here, F5 that, and I'm going to tie this to T0, which is my timer from here. I'm then going to tie that to an output coil, which is going to be Y1 and then turn on that output after 10 seconds. I'm then going to F4 that, compile our project, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save our work here, I'm then going to go to online and transfer setup. And here is where we set up our PLC communications. Now we're currently using over here RS232 and the COM port that we are communicating with is COM2. So I'm just going to make sure that's selected. Our transmission speed 19.2 kiloboard. Say OK to that and then we're just going to do a quick connection test. And it says they're successfully connected with the PLC. Say OK to that. Say OK to that. And now I can download this to the project. So to download, we just go to online, write to PLC, select our main program. I'm not going to select comments or parameters. And then I'm just going to select execute. Select OK to that. And now it's going to say, do you want to stop the PLC? I'm going to say yes to that. And now it's going to begin downloading to the project. This takes a little while to do, so I'll come back when it's finished downloading. Now that that's finished downloading, I'm just gonna then select close from here. I'm then gonna go online. Now to go online with our PLC, we can use these little short keys up here, monitor mode or monitor write mode. Monitor write mode actually allows us to change the code whilst online, like an online download. I'm just gonna go to monitor mode for now. When we go to monitor mode, you'll see this monitor status pop up with our current scan time and the actual position of the PLC, which is in run mode at the moment. And you'll get these sort of blue icons here telling you what's on and what's off at the moment. We can see that our M1 
is currently off and as it's normally closed contact it's blues telling us that it's going to allow current flow to pass through. Now for us to enable this match all I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger M0. When I trigger M0 Y0 will then turn on, Y0 will then turn on from here, turn on our timer and then after 10 seconds it will then turn on our output. So if I just right click our M0 and I go to device test Inside a device test, you'll see your little menu pop up, and what it'll have inside of there is M0, force on, force off. This isn't a true force as such. Think of this like a toggle bit or a modified bit. It's not a true force as such. So we've got M0 there. I'm just going to force that on and then force that off again so it's just acting like a push button, and you can now see that my timer is timing up to 100 or, one, or 10 seconds. And there we go there. After the 10 second period, T0 then turned on, and it then turned on Y1 from there. Now, like any other timer, this is an on-delay timer, which is available in all PLCs. If I lose the signal to this timer, so if I turn off Y0, T0 will then turn off and reset, turning off our T0, turning off our Y1. So again, if I just go to device test, and this time I'm gonna trigger M1. If I force that on, force that off, we will then see that the timer resets and goes back to zero. If I type in here M0, and then I force on, force off, and then type in M1, and then I force on after a few seconds, you'll see the timer loses its value. It doesn't retain any sort of value inside of the PLC there. I'm just gonna force that back off again. Now inside of Mitsubishi, we've just got this one timer, which is our on-delay timer. Now, if you've worked with Siemens before, you know that you've got other timers available to you. You know that you've got things like the off-delay, you've got things like the pulse delay, the latched-on delay, the latched pulse delay. All of these timers can be created via this one timer over here. So for example, the pulse delay timer is a timer that turns on an output for a period of time and then turns off the signal, no matter how long the input signal is on for. So if I wanted to turn on Y0 when we press the button, run it for 10 seconds and then turn Y0 off, how could we do this? Well, we would basically invert this logic state. So if I come offline and go back into right mode here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Y0 to control this entire network now. So I'm gonna just branch down from here add a vertical line in there, and I'm gonna delete T0 from here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place T0 in this horizontal line over here as a normally closed contact. There we go, F for that, and that is now my pulse delay timer. So what this will do is when Y0 is triggered, Y0 will turn on and it will begin running this timer. At the same time, this timer is still gonna be off, this Y1 will be on. It'll be on for the length of that timer there. After 10 seconds, Y1 will then turn off. So if I now just go to online, right to PLC, send in the main program, say yes to that, say yes to that, and it's gonna download once again. Switch it back to remote run, close that down, go back to online, and now we're ready. So when I trigger our M0, we'll then see our Y1 turn on, and it will turn on for the period that T0 has been set to. So if I say force on from here, force off, you can now see our Y0 is on, sorry, our Y1 is on, and the timer is running. After 10 seconds, Y1 will then turn off. And that there is the pulse timer inside a Siemens Step 7 TIA portal using the on delay timer. We just invert the logic state for the timer contact. Technically, this is also the latched pulse timer as we're using a latch to control this. So this input signal needs to be on briefly. So that there is basically the four timers created for Siemens. The on delay timer, which would just use a standard push button to control the timer itself. The latched on delay timer, which is using this latching circuit to control the timer. A pulse timer, which would basically replace this Y0 with just a push button. And then the latch pulse timer, which means that the push button only needs to be on temporarily. The only thing this doesn't cover is the off delay timer. The off delay timer looks at when the input signal turns off and then continues to have the 
the output on for a period of time. Think of like an extraction fan where you turn off the process, the extraction fan still continues to run for a period of time and then turns off. For us to be able to do that, we need to know a little bit more about GX Developer and things like their rising edge pulses and their negative edge pulses. But we'll look at that at a later date. Now looking at the time of this video, what we'll do is we'll uh, stop it here after looking at timers and then what we'll do is we'll continue on another video looking at things like counters. I also want to cover things like comments, also doing things like online edits as well on GX Developer because like I say, GX Developer is an older software package. There's not many YouTube videos out at the moment on GX Developer and what I'd like to do is just give you guys some of the basics to do with GX Developer. We do provide more of an in-depth look at GX Developer and everything that comes with it in our hands-on training course. So again, if you want to learn more about this sort of PLC programmer and get some hands-on experience and also an EAL recognized certificate, then I would recommend looking at attending our hands-on training course. You can just contact us via our website and we'll send some information for that. So as I mentioned, don't forget to leave the video a like, comment below on what you'd like to see next time and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next week.